Good morning and welcome to chapel here at Community Missions. I am Reverend Mark Brees. I am uh, glad to be with you here uh, uh, this morning and hope that uh, your uh, uh, week has been going well so far as we uh, move into the uh, dog days of summer, that last stretch of summer where school is beginning and all that stuff. So um, just hopefully all will be, will be well for everybody as we go along the way. Um, just a couple of reminders as we start today. Uh, first, uh, there will be hymns that uh, are uh, part of the service and there is singing. So if you are at home by yourself or someplace uh, by yourself uh, watching, uh, maybe your office or uh, someplace, you're welcome to sing as much as you like uh, and you go ahead and do that. Uh, if you are with your uh, safe group, like your home living group, your bubble that you live with, that you uh, um, uh, that place where you have people that you're with where you're not wearing masks, right? Um, also, if you would like to uh, sing there, you may. You can even sing together. That's perfectly fine. Um, if you're in some other kind of group setting, though, uh, uh, where you're watching this and it is not with your uh, safe living group, with your bubble that you have created, uh, for yourself, uh, then uh, please continue to wear your mask and instead of singing, just enjoy uh, the music that is part of the service today. Just uh, uh, have a listen and, and uh, meditate and follow along with the words silently, but don't be singing because that's not uh, one of the, it's one of the most dangerous activities uh, that we can engage in these days. So uh, that said, I have one other thing and it's just that I've been saying for a few weeks, I have um, uh, had a bit of an incident where I had kind of a lung injury, I guess what is what it would be called, um, and my voice is slowly, slowly, ever so slowly recovering. I have made it a point not to speak for the last couple of hours, so hopefully I'll be able to get through this service without having to uh, clear my throat or take a pause and put up that I'll be back in a moment screen um, so we can uh, uh, be able to uh, have a uh, service without being interrupted with my voice. So I apologize in advance and ask your tolerance uh, for that. So as we can begin worship then uh, this morning, uh, our call to worship, uh, it uh, uh, comes from uh, the Psalms. It is from Psalm 105 and it's verses 1 through 4. Oh, give thanks to the Lord and call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Uh, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. As we continue uh, with worship this morning, let us join in the first hymn and our music again this week. It's coming from the hymnalproject.com, uh, uh, part of the uh, um, uh, Lutheran Synod of uh, the the uh, Lutheran uh, Church, uh, Missouri Synod, uh, put together this great set of resources. So um, we're very happy to uh, be able to have that as part of our um, uh, service today. And uh, Joanne, uh, who have been providing music, uh, Joanne Lorenzo, in the past uh, number of weeks, you'll be uh, back contributing more music along the way as well. So let's join together as we continue uh, to worship in song. Be 
justified by grace. See all your sins on Jesus laid. The Lamb of God was slain. His soul was once an offering made for every soul of man. To God all glory, praise and love. Church in earth and heaven. As we continue in worship this morning, we come to a time of prayer. And um, I uh, uh, just want to sort of go through um, uh, some of that uh, uh, list of things that we've sort of been keeping in uh, our prayer uh, each, uh, each time we've gathered together. Um, they are important things. That's why I keep bringing them up. So, uh, and, uh, because prayer matters, <laughs> it makes a difference. Um, the uh, first is, of course, for all those who are struggling with illness, whether it's from COVID-19 or whatever it might be, um, it's just so important that we continue to pray for folks, uh, that they have the healing that they need, that their families will be able to be with them in ways that are, uh, and loved ones that are, are, are helpful for them, and that people will feel uh, God's presence with them in the midst of that struggle. And especially for those uh, suffering with uh um, COVID-19 that um, uh, we need to pray that God's presence is with them in a way that is um, uh, very powerful indeed. It is an illness that is suffered alone uh, and um, and that is hard on um, people who are sick and on uh, people who uh, care about um, those who are sick, their, their loved ones. Um, so we need to pray um, in special ways for each of them, um, all those who might be suffering. Um, we also uh, need to continue to keep in our prayers uh, those uh, people who are struggling through the various uh, um, aftermath of various uh, um, uh, natural disaster things that have been going on. Um, you know, so uh, that's with uh, fires and windstorms and hurricanes and on and on and on. Just keep things just keep seem to be trickling in. So um, you're grateful that things were not as bad as they could have been with the recent hurricanes. Um, and um, we're always grateful for the places where um, uh, where God uh, has uh, uh, given us a bit of a pass on uh, uh, how things might otherwise have been. Um, you just need to be uh, very um, um, certain and uh, clear that there are people who are struggling for um, uh, these kinds of reasons. So um, that we need to be praying for them and find ways that we can reach out uh, to help. Uh, we also need to be praying for uh, there to be some kind of action that will help things economically. Economically, we know that so many people um, have been struggling because of the way the economy has been affected. So um, uh, please keep in your hearts and um, uh, your prayers those who are, are struggling. Um, and if you are having a hard financial time, um, pray for God's guidance to find places to reach out to, like uh, community missions and, and so many other organizations that um, do have help available for people and, and do find, um, uh, you know, seek out those um, kinds of help that you can you can get um, that can that can help you through these difficult times. Uh, and finally, I just want to keep bringing up, we have the uh, election season upon us. Uh, so it is um, important that we uh, uh, consider uh, the way that we will vote um, uh, as the uh, day approaches, that we will consider how we will do that in um, wise ways, how we will exercise that, that privilege. Um, and um, we also need to be uh, asking for God's guidance for all those who seek to govern, who seek to go into public service um, and that are in it now, whether they're in it or campaigning. Just uh, We need to pray that God will touch the hearts of all those who are engaged in public service and seeking office, um, that they can be guided by God's compassion and God's love, especially for those who need it most. Um, that, that will be the yardstick and the measure by which they govern um, how God would want them to treat their neighbors. So all of these things, and I'm sure there are many others that you have on your minds and on your hearts. Um, let us join in a time of prayer together um, and bring all of these things uh, uh, to God. Um, because God is good 
God is gracious and God always hears our prayers. It is always uh, wonderful to have that time of prayer, and I encourage you to um, continue in prayer throughout your week. Make it a regular part of every day. As we continue in our worship this morning, we come to our text for the week. Again, we've been following along with these uh, uh, stories from um, uh, uh, Matthew, and we come to the one uh, uh, which... Uh, um, is uh, familiar to some, and I, and I just wanted to 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 touch on it here with you all um, uh, about Peter and his um, response um, uh, to Jesus' teaching about the uh, uh, need for the cross. So um, let's take a look at the text. It is uh, Matthew sixteen twenty one through twenty eight. So from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not uh, have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple uh, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their souls? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man uh, coming in his kingdom. A text for us to reflect on. Um, and um, uh, I guess the question that I would um, ask of people uh, as we sort of um, uh, look, at this, look at this text here is to um, uh, think about uh, our intentions. Um, think about our intentions. Intentions are um, pretty important. Um, so, um, in how we um, approach the world. So, I'd like you to take just a few moments and we're going to listen to a hymn and we're going to reflect on that idea of intentions uh, as we uh, as we continue in worship today. Beautiful Savior, King of creation, Son of God and Son of Man, truly I love Thee, truly I serve
So, intentions, intentions. Um, we need to be kind of careful about our intentions. Uh, sometimes we think that what we are doing is the right thing, and it turns out that it's not. That we don't have all the information. And that's usually um, the the uh, place where it. Um, goes most wrong. We uh, react in ways that are um, too soon or too sudden um, or without really uh, waiting for all of the information. I know that I am often prone to this. I try not to do it. Um, It's always there in the back of my mind, but uh, sometimes I I get a piece of information and I start to react on it before I've thought. Um, And uh, before I have all of the data. Um, and I have some people in my life who, um, you know, point that kind of stuff out to me, and I'm always so grateful uh, to them. And uh, um, I'm much better at it these days. Um, and uh, I was, when I was younger, though, it was uh, uh, one of those things that um, would cause me no end of trouble. And, and that's a little bit of what we see here uh, when, we, when we're looking at, um, at, at at Peter, um, this reaction uh, to Jesus' statements about uh, what um, uh, they need to be getting ready for. Um, And it's one of those things that's kind of a famous statement for uh, um, uh, Christians, this idea where Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, right? You're a stumbling block to me. Uh, Do you have, uh, you do not have in mind the concerns of God but merely human concerns. And Jesus says this to Peter um, because what he what he's uh, reacting to is what Jesus' teaching uh, was. Jesus' teaching before that moment was that he began to explain more clearly to the disciples. It had always been there to a certain extent, but this is the point at which he is explaining um, that uh, uh, that. Uh, Jesus is going to have to go through this Easter event, right? That for us is what that is. This that he was going to have to be betrayed, uh, be uh, um, be suffer and turned over to the authorities, uh, that he'd be killed and on the third day be raised uh, again. And uh, Peter actually acts in kind of a well, actually kind of a loving way. You know, he he says to him. Uh, he says he takes him aside and it says the text says he rebuked Jesus right saying listen you you got it wrong Jesus is what he's saying he said never some translations it says God forbid right Uh, the the words in in the Greek text have this real uh, sense of prayer about them like you know when somebody uh, is talking and they say oh um you know, I hope this bad thing doesn't happen. Or, you know, we like, God forbid that let that happen. That's kind of what Jesus is saying here. Look, this isn't going to happen. You, you, you need to have faith in God. You need to trust that this is, this is not. Don't think that way. It's not healthy. You, you, God is on your side, is what Peter is saying. Um, he's not being, he's not like taking, um, uh, he's not taking Jesus to task. 
Um, it, it, it's much more a sense of being trying to be helpful, right? His intentions are actually in the right place. But then Jesus reacts in this way and says, no, 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 you don't get it. You, you, have, you don't understand and you haven't gotten it all along. You're thinking about what's good for you and maybe even good for me. You're thinking in a way that's not divine. You're not thinking about what God's plan needs to be. And so um, Jesus then goes on to explain, like, look, it's really important that uh, you understand, you know, what we are, what's, what's being pointed out here. You know, whoever wants to be my disciple has to deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Um, who, uh, whoever loses their life for me will find it. That's some pretty stark language, right? It's like whoever wants to be my disciple must take up their cross and follow me. I mean, think about this. In terms of the disciples, like they had been following Jesus, waiting for things to shift all around them. They were waiting for this great message that Jesus has been giving and all the miracles and all this. They were waiting for the kingdom of God to be ushered in. And in particular to them, that looked like the return of Jerusalem out from under the oppression of the Romans and uh, uh, for the uh, ways in which the temple system had been becoming, uh, religious system had becoming corrupt and not uh, what it ought to be um, and, and, you know, to be a little bit more user-friendly. They were waiting for all this to be ushered in by Jesus in reality in the world, when really what Jesus was ushering in was a new spiritual reality, um, not just for the people then, but for everybody, for us, for down the ages, uh, that there'd be forgiveness, that there would be newness of life um, through uh, the redemptive, uh, sacrificial um, uh, actions of God on the cross um, that for each one of us we can have and join in that newness of life uh, through the death and resurrection of Christ that we can by becoming a follower seeking God's forgiveness start our life anew um, to uh, have that option for ourselves every day that's what was happening. God's intention was something much bigger than what um, Peter uh, was looking at in the moment. And again, just the whole other part, whole other part about being a Christian, um, being called when Jesus says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up the cross. I mean, there's a sense in which who wants to be a Christian? Who would want to, you know have all that headache and heartache that seems to come with it, um, that at least that's what Jesus is saying will be the case. And I think there's a reason for that. I don't have the text up here because I had one of those small technical difficulties during the last hymn, but I can read it to you. It's from Romans. It's one of the other texts from today. It says this. It says, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. It says, love one another with mutual affection. Being part of the, uh, uh, being part of the Christian family is this idea of how we're supposed to live towards one another. That's the real benefit. So like, yeah, there's all of this, um, challenges that come with being a Christian, with being a follower of Christ, with living that kind of life. But um, the idea of what it is to bring into being in the world, what our struggles help make happen in the world, um, is pretty amazing. Um, and uh, Romans 12 it goes on to say, you know, that rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, uh, live in harmony with one another in 1216 to not be haughty associate with the lowly um, uh, to not claim to be wiser uh, than um, uh, wiser than you are to not repay anyone evil for evil but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all if it's possible so far as it depends on you live peaceably with all right rejoice in hope be patient in suffering persevere in prayer this is all like this sounds great and indeed that's what the gift 
of salvation is about, right? It brings us the ability to work to bring those things into being in our life. It's not going to be easy, but this is what the meaning of the journey, the earthly journey of Jesus uh, through his uh, teaching and healing ministry to the cross and the grave and resurrection. That's what it was all about. That it was going to bring um, these things into being um, and, and that those things are there for us to take hold of. I guess that's why I started out asking about intentions. What are our intentions in the world? Our intention in the world ought to be how are we going to be uh, able to um, bring about good, right? And we need to be careful about it and deliberate about it. And we need to have all the information when we act. And we make to make sure that our good intentions truly will have good results. And that means being willing to learn and to change and to grow. Peter's initial reaction wasn't so bad, really. He was actually had good intentions. He was trying to say, hey, look, it can be different for you. It doesn't have to be this way. Our intentions can often be good too, even if we don't have all the data and maybe we get it wrong at the start. But the example of scripture is that Jesus went on to teach the disciples. And although they didn't get it right away, obviously it came into being in them and understanding for them. Because here we are a couple thousand years plus later with a faith that is thriving around the world. Followers of the teachings of Christ everywhere on all uh, continents on all corners of the earth. So long as we're willing to be led, to learn and to grow and to change and to grow into our good intentions, to recognize that we might not have it all right and correct at the start, to change when we need to change, to move and shift the direction, to keep working towards that vision uh, that uh, of what it is like to be a follower of Jesus. It's not repay evil for evil, um, but to um, bless one another, to rejoice with each other, to comfort each other in sadness, um, to live in peace and work in ways to promote that peaceful living, to be patient and to persevere in prayer. All of these things that um, are the hallmarks of what we want to bring about in the world, in our own lives and in the lives of others. So, uh, sisters and brothers, have good intentions. Try and live them out. Be willing to step up and um, put that good intent out into the world, but also be willing to recognize that we need to tread carefully. We ought to just not react suddenly to things, that we should be considered in how we bring about that good, uh, how we work to do that. Because God will lead us just like Jesus was leading Peter through this moment of his good intentions being off the mark. Um, our good intentions sometimes might be too. Um, but if we listen, if we open our hearts, and if we uh, follow where God's Spirit leads us, those good intentions, they will uh, um, come to fruition in the world because God is good and that's what God calls us to do for one another. So until we uh, meet uh, again next week, uh, God go with you. Uh, God's blessing um, lift you up and may God's peace fill your heart uh, so that um, you can live in the light of Christ each day. Blessed truth.